And as we'll see, if I now search for something random like this, search, then we get a crash because that user doesn't exist and we try to separate by something that isn't there. So we're going to check if it is there and which means we have gotten a user successfully. So we're going to check if web content, if web content dot, let's see, we just have to stop that dot um, contains. And we're going to check if it contains this string, first of all, so a title. And we are also going to check just to be completely sure that web content, let's see, come on, content dot contains. And we're going to check if it contains this one too. And if it does, we're pretty sure that we have successfully found a user. And then we are going to run all of this code only if that is the case. So copy that and then paste it right in here. But if that isn't the case, let's see, just tidy up here, remove the spaces. If that isn't the case and web content doesn't contain them, we can be pretty sure that we haven't found a user or that user doesn't exist. In that case, we are going to tell that to the user and we're going to say self dot my label dot text is equal to sorry we couldn't find that user so let's search again and now we shouldn't get <laughs> not search but uh, launch the app and now we should not get an error if uh, that user doesn't exist instead we should get that label and I just uh, thought of something that we of course need to do this on the main queue also so we need to say dispatch queue dot main dot async and we're going to run this piece of code inside this one let's launch it one more time and then I'm going to try to search for a completely random user that uh, hopefully does not exist and as we'll see, we won't get a crash. We instead will get that uh, message. So let's try to write that search. Sorry, we couldn't find that user. And although our app is already pretty awesome, we are going to add one more thing and that is an activity indicator. So when our user has made a search, instead of uh, um, then the user is still able to interact with our app even though our app is currently working. So we want to first of all show that the app is working by displaying an activity indicator and we also want to disable the user from further interacting with our application. So this is done by first of all creating our activity indicator activity in indicator just like that let's remove these and then we are going to create a variable so we're going to say var activity indicator is equal to a ui activity indicator let's see ui activity indicator view just like that and then we're going to create a function that we can call and when we call that function, the whole um, activity indicator should start. So let's just add these. So we're going to create func start a, just to make it short and simple. Then we are going to set up the activity indicator and start it. So we just, um, our goal is to just call that function and then the activity ind indicator starts and everything runs smoothly. So we're going to say UI application and this, by the way, hasn't anything to do with the indicator itself. But this is just to disable the user to interact further with our application. So we're going to begin ignoring interaction events. So first of all, when we call the function, the user isn't able to interact with our app anymore until we, of course, enable him to do it again. Then we're going to say activity indicator. Uh, dot activity indicator view style is equal to UI activity indicator view style dot gray. We want the gray indicator. Then we're also going to say activity indicator dot center is equal to view dot center. So the center of our view. And then we're going to say activity indicator 
dot hides when stopped is equal to true. This simply means that when we stop the activity indicator, it also hides instead of us having to do both. And we say activity indicator dot start animating. And then we add it to our view by saying uh, view dot add sub view. And our sub view is our activity indicator. Just like that. And now when we call our function, our activity indicator starts. So let's call that function when we have successfully uh, seen that the user has inputted something and right before we start to get all of the information. So we're going to say start A. So let's try to run our application and just see how it looks. But of course it's going to continue into infinity because we don't stop it from animating at any point. But just to see how it is, let's search for uh, one the Swift guy search and as you can see our activity indicator is active and we can't interact with our app that is awesome but it's not so awesome if we don't stop it at any point and that is what we're going to do down here when we have updated all of our interface we're also going to say activity self dot activity indicator dot stop animating and we're also going to enable the user to interact again so UI or UI application dot shared dot and ignoring interaction events and we're going to copy those two and also paste them down here even though our user gets an error he's going to have the opportunity of course to search again instead of an activity indicator just bugging him down so let's try to run it once again and now it should stop exactly as um, it should stop when all everything is updated and ready for the user. So let's write in one, the Swift guy, search, search, and there we go. Then we can still scroll and interact. And as you can see, we can't edit the text anymore. And that is basically all there is to it. This is our finished product. Let's try to search for, once again, a messy team search and that wasn't the official one let's see team messy team messy and search and everything is working as we want it to work so this is awesome congratulations for finishing the twitter app in the next video i'm going to go through uh, all of the code one more time and explain everything if there is something that you might not have understood and of course and of course remember that there is always a comment section below the below 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 this video so once again thank you for watching hopefully you enjoyed this little uh, week-long tutorial if you did make sure that you click the subscribe button so that you stay tuned for future videos and once again thank you for watching